flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call this meeting, West Spring City Council order. Roll call, please. Christy? Here. Crowner? Here. Heitmeyer? Lees? Here. Waterman? Here. Need to perfect and approve the agenda. So move. move. Support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Snap. Motion with support. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Connor? Aye. 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 Christy? Aye. Motion carried. Consent agenda. Motion to approve as presented. Second. So motion with support to approve consent agenda items one through seven which are the uh, minutes from the regular city council meeting on February 19, 2020. Uh, approved city administrator Gifford and finance officer Sattler's attendance at the Iowa Employment Training Conference. <laughs> Accept Nick Baker's resignation from the police reserve unit. Uh, approved payment to final <coughs> say for the 4th of July entertainment. Uh, approved payment to emergency apparatus maintenance. Uh, approved the clerk's monthly financial report for January 2020. And approve the claims list as presented in the amount of $96,709.43. Any discussion? Roll call. Please. Aye. Waterman? Aye. Christy? Aye. Connor? Aye. Mr. Carey, staff reports. Dan? Uh, only thing I have. Um, the next council meeting in two weeks, I won't be here. I have a conference I'll be away at. So when the packet goes out, if you have questions, call me Monday or Tuesday. Anybody have anything for Dan? <coughs> nope, I don't have anything tonight. How'd the crack ceiling go? Good, good. They're going good, and the, and the tar's going farther than expected, so. And I Seeing the guys working over here on that hydrant too. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll be back another day. We uh, we're struggling over there. The hydrant and the uh, valve, when it was installed, was poured concrete around the whole thing. So we can't unbuckle a broken hydrant. Now we have to remove a valve and couplings in the T. We're actually going to be cutting a section out of the water main and setting all new in there. And we're going to reverse the hydrant back towards the sidewalk to get it farther from the street, maybe prevent somebody else sliding off that corner and, and hitting it once we get done. So Where's that, Mike? Corner by the drive-up bank on Leffler and Mount Pleasant. It was hit by a car, uh, has that been, what, a month ago or a month and a half ago? Okay. Anybody have anything for Mike? Jess? I got a couple things. I'd like to thank the West Burlington Lion Clubs. They give us a donation every year for the... DARE program that we have at city. Um, they do a good job for us, donate $150, and Officer Covert goes out and gets some things for the kids for DARE graduation, so for the SA winners and different things. And then uh, right now we got a tentative date. Uh, we uh, normally invite all the council or whoever would like to attend. As of right now, we're looking at May 14th, which is a Thursday for DARE graduation. Um, it's, normally around 2 p.m. when it starts so when we get a few things more finalized with officer covert in the school i will pass that on but i just wanted to get it on a calendar let you guys be aware of it anybody have anything for jess sean on the uh, building side got a couple vehicles moved around <coughs> cleaned up um, looks a lot better just like to remind the public with uh, hopefully the warm weather that's hopefully going to stay with us when you mow your lawns. Uh, don't mow it out into the street and also six inches or less. We seem to have a few problems with some people, a few houses in town always that we just got to follow up on. Um, Vernon Street Apartments Complex is getting a new maintenance guy. Uh, I happen to know him, so I'll be working with him just to ensure, try to reduce the number of alarms that we go over there on. Uh, hopefully he can help talk with some of the residents on keeping down our number of our volume of fire calls over there and then on the fire side just uh, with the warmer weather trying to pick up get things ready to go out at the training site I did have a meeting in Ames yesterday um, they had a lot of questions regarding our training site and our capabilities uh, it's looking very promising that this is gonna 
be more than just a county training site that will be able to get a little bit of state recognition out of this. Anybody have any for Sean? <clears throat> Kelly? Leslie? Kathy, you got anything going on? Andy? Uh, I just wanted to mention, obviously, we just approved uh, entertainment for 4th of July. Moving forward pretty quickly on that. Uh, items stacking up in the hallway. Um, if anybody has somebody interested in volunteering for that day, wants to run something, has something that they've done in the past and is interested, uh, please come see me. I see you and I'll be doing the bike races. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, good. All right. This time I'm going to open a public hearing, and the public hearing is on an environment information document, an SRF loan application for the water tower and distribution system improvements. And Susan Coffey from Regional Planning is with us. Yes, you have to speak into the mic, Susan. <laughs> and you need to introduce. Your, your cohort, because yep. I, I don't think I've ever met her yet. <laughs> yeah, you have. Maybe not. Good evening. Maybe not. My name is Susan Coffey, and this is Lisa McPherson. We're from the Southeast Iowa Regional Planning Commission, and we will be administering the state revolving loan fund um, from the Iowa Department of Natural Resources for the water tower project. And um, just to let the council and also the community know that an informational, an environmental informational document has been submitted. Um, from the Department of Natural Resources SRF um, individual and to let everyone know that the um, envir or the project will not affect the environment and the environment will not affect the project. Um, the purpose of this project is to make improvements um, to the drinking water distribution system and to enhance the reli reli reliability, increase capacity, and reliable operate the City of West Burlington drinking waters water system for the next 20 years. Uh, the proposed project includes construction of a 500,000 gallon composite style water tower with a concrete column and steel bulb, approximately 4,400 feet of water main and 530 feet of, wat of storm, sewer in you know, storm sewer installed at various depths for, are also included. <clears throat> the, pro the project covers an estimated total of 4.30 acres with approximately 1.85 acres of ground disturbing construction activities. Uh, the current source water, as you know, the city of West Burlington receives its water from the city of Burlington uh, via two water mains that are routed directly to a booster station located on Division Street and a ground storage tank on Gear <coughs> Avenue. Um, the, the existing ground storage <laughs> tank on Gear Avenue is fed by a 12 inch supply main that connects to the city of West Burlington, a general approximately proximity of St. Mary's Catholic Church and the first Rolf, Rolf, Rolf Realty um, and then is routed directly to the ground storage tank um, with no service connections. Um, the current distri distribution system is a 500,000 um, gallon ground, ground storage tank generally serves the northern portion of the city while an elevated tower with 500 gallon capacity generally serves the southern portion of the city. Um, the reason for the, there was multiple um, alternatives to this project, but the reason for the selection of the proposed alternative was that the no action alternative is not viable due to the ground storage tank and accompanying booster station having reached the end of their usable, u usable life. Uh, the project site was selected for the availability of land, expectations for future growth, hydraulic considerations, operational considerations, capital and ongoing cost, as well as minimization of the impacts of the environment. Um, there was many, there was different agencies that were contacted for this environmental document to, um, to give them the, the access of what the project is and if that project is going to affect the environment. Uh, they were the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, State Historical Society of Iowa, uh, Iowa DNR Conservation and Recreational Division, Iowa DNR Water Resource Section, and um, many uh, Native American tribes. Um, the construction, uh, the, the traffic patterns within the community may be disrupted in above normal noise levels um, in the vicinity of the construction equipment, um, but it's anticipated during construction only and um, will be just a temporary problem. 
Um, the uh, noise quality will be handled by limited hours of contractors' work time. Uh, care will be taken to maintain dirt to avoid erosion and runoff. Uh, temp temporary air quality degradation may occur, doing, occur due to dust and fumes from construction equipment. Um, uh, State Historical Preservation Office and various Native American tribes um, with an interest in the area were provided information regarding the project. The DNR was determined that the SHPO was concurred and that, and that this undertaking will result in no historic properties affected. Um, in the summary of reasons um, for concluding no significant impact on this project was the project will not significantly impact the pattern and type of land use, industrial, commercial, agricultural, recreational, residential, or growth and distribution of population. The project will not conflict with local, regional, and state land, land use plans or policies. The project will not impact wetlands. The project will not affect threatened and endangered species or their habitats. If any state or federal listed and threatened and or endangered species or communities are found during are found during the planning or construction phases, additional studies and or mitigation may be required. The project will not displace population, alter the character of existing residential areas, or convert significant farmlands to non-agriculture purposes. The project will not affect the 100-year floodplain. The, the project will not have effect on parklands, um, preser preserves, other public lands, or, er or areas of recognized scenic or recreational value. No historical properties will be adversely affected by the proposed project. However, if project activities uncover any items that might be of archaeological, historical, or architectural interest, or if important new archaeological, historical, or architectural data should be encountered in the project APA area, area of potential effects, um, the applicant should make reasonable efforts to avoid further impacts to the property and, until an assessment can be made by an individual meeting the Secretary of Interior's professional qualification standards. Uh, the project will not have a significant adverse effect upon local ambient or quality, uh, provided the applicant takes reasonable precautions to prevent the discharge of um, visible emissions of fugitive um, dust beyond the lot line of the property during the proposed project. The project will not have a significant adverse effect upon local ambient noise levels, surface water quantity, groundwater quali quality or quantity, or water supply, and no significant impact to surface water quality, fish, selfish, um, wildlife, or other natural habitats as expected, uh, provided that a that uh, National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, MPDES, general permit number two, uh, <clears throat> with um, Let's see, for stormwater discharge associated with construction activities as obtained and the terms of which will be abided. The, pro the project description, scope, and anticipated environmental impacts detailed above are accurate and complete to the best of my knowledge. Any questions? <laughs> and I didn't have to read that. <laughs> One correction, though. What's the that? elevated towers, 500,000 gallons. Yeah, that you read 500. Oh, and it does say 500,000. Sorry. Okay. Just yep. want we'll to make sure. Yeah, it does. Enough. It does. The elevated construction of a 500,000 gallon. Yeah, sorry. But the, the existing one is oh, 500,000. Mm. Also. Oh, uh, a 500,000 gallon ground storage tank. So and 500,000 gallon elevated. Yeah. The existing one. Oh, but yeah. But you said 500. Sorry, I meant 500,000. Right. It does say 500,000 in here, okay. so my apologies. All righty. Is there any other public comments? Did you receive any written comments? Yeah. Council want to make any comments? Close the public hearing then. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out tonight. You're welcome. And so the next step is Ben has to... <laughs> deal with all those ifs and what I don't get is about the noise level do they realize there's a train that goes by there about every <laughs> 30 some times a day and blows their whistles oh, that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know they say 
not excessive noise. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. So the other public hearing, number two, is on the proposed development agreement with Greater Burlington Partnership. I guess I'll close that public hearing first. Okay. So council will vote, will hold a public hearing on development agreement with Greater Burlington Partnership, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. Did we receive any written comments on that one? Any verbal comments? A council want to make a comment. Close the public hearing on that one. Anyone wishing to address the council on matters that are not on the agenda tonight? All right, we'll go to new business. Item number one is to consider resolution approving development agreement with Greater Burlington Partnership, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. So move. Support. There's a motion with support. Is there any discussion? Roll we'll call. Waterman? Aye. Christie? Aye. Browner? Aye. Please? Aye. Motion carried. I'm number two is consider payment to Snyder Associates for engineering services related to the following projects. The facility plan lift station replacement, $3,900. Water tower and booster station project, $11,950. Des Moines County landfill lift station project, $9,100. Agency street crossing project, $1,950. And wastewater treatment plan project, $1,828.25. Motion to approve all payments. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? <coughs> Leslie, on the, have you been sending any bills over? Yeah, I was, was going to do that real soon. Is they? So you're talking about the landfill? Yeah. 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 I got them in a folder. Okay. This is all I want to make sure that we don't run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> Hope not. Okay. Roll call. Waterman? Aye. Christie? Aye. Aye. Please. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> I'm number three is to consider selling the fire department Scotty safety trailer on govdeals.com. I see from the memo that Sean wrote to you, there hasn't been <clears throat> much use at all of it in the last few years, probably 10 years. Not by, not by us. Um, Burlington does use it from, use it from time to time. And I did talk to them about it, and I got a not interested out of them at that point in time when I asked them. Um, Jesse might be able to tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it's been at least a good seven, if not eight years, that we've actually used it. Well, it takes uh, you know, it takes quite a few people to operate it, and you got to have the commitment to do it. So, if some other community can get a some good use out of it, um, you know, all for letting it go. I mean, we got it through a grant, and the time for the grant has expired, you know, to where we had to hold it. Have you looked any idea about what you think it'll bring? Um, Dan and I have seen one on different websites, and they were getting around 3,000, 3,500, uh, slightly different trailer. It does have new tires on it. We put those on there a couple of years ago when um, the Denmark Fire Department, Denmark Weaver used it. Um, and we put new tires on it after that. They had used it and had a tire blowout. Um, that was actually, best of my knowledge, first time it ever had tires put on it, new tires put on it. So it does have a, it does serve a good use. Uh, it's a great trailer for educating the kids, but it's just something that we don't have the the capability, the manpower, time, availability to, to utilize. And I think there's agencies out there that would be better served by having something like that available to them. All motion to approve. Support. Motion to support. Is there any further discussion? Roll call. Christie? Aye. Browner? Aye. Please? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Motion carried. 
Item number four is to consider a resolution adding Clinton Bradley and Ethan Allen to the fire department. I take it that's you gentlemen. Which one of you is Clinton? Which one is Clinton? Bradley is the other one. All right. Thank you for being willing to serve. Thank you. Motion to approve. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Crowner? Aye. Please. Aye. Waterman? Aye. Christie? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Again, thanks for willing, Thank you. being willing to serve and Thank you. welcome to the fire department. Yep. Item number five is consider resolution setting salaries for Joel Snaden and Chase Williams. Mike and Dan have both recommended to uh, move Joel and Chase up from their probationary period. Uh, well, if you read Mike's memo, uh, pretty much explains that uh, they've done a great job and they're willing to learn and uh, we have moved people up from their probationary period to a uh, full salary in the, in the past. So I don't, uh, every time I see those two boys, they're, they're always busy and working. So I don't have a problem with moving them up. Motion to approve. Support. Motion to support. Any discussion? Roll call. Please. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Christie. Aye. Connor. Aye. Motion carried. Item number six is consider resolution setting public hearing on the proposed sale of real property and Roars subdivision. I take it we're going to do that on April 1st? Or is it? Is that what it is? <laughs> My memo says that. I didn't see a date in it. It says March 18th. In the <clears throat> My memo says March 18th. Okay. Yeah. I wrote the first one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. There's a sec second public hearing that we'll do for the vacation of that ground, but um, the attorney wanted us to do the hearing for the sale of it first. I'm looking at my notes after the outline of this whole process that we have to go through, so it is the 18th. The 18th? Okay. Is there a motion to that effect? A move. A move. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Do we have any idea of, of plans or how that's zoned? Um, it's going to be uh, it's zoned for residential. Mm -hmm. And he does have a plan to develop, redevelop those lots into a smaller subdivision. Okay. So single family homes though is the is the target. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Waterman? Aye. Christie? Aye. Browner? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Ben, you got anything going on? I can answer any questions you guys have on any of the projects. It's all moving dirt out there at the hospital. I don't think they have any. Moving dirt. Sewer plant? Oh, yes. For the trail. Still need to haul some sludge <coughs> out of that. Yep, uh, they haven't been on site to haul sludge since January 23rd of last year. Um, they're just, uh, the prime contractor has to sub out that work because it's kind of a specialty work. Um, and the subcontractors just had other jobs. Um, I thought he was coming next week, like three weeks ago. Oh, yeah, they've been saying <laughs> that for months, so, you know. I don't know, at some point we're going to have to do something. I, yeah. I've talked to Bobby off and on. I know it's trying, but at some point we're going to have to do something. I do have sympathy for them because there's they can't do it themselves, but at the same time, you know, it's going to take to get their sub done. Yeah. Are, are we adding more sludge to it in the meantime? Um, yes, but we set a ceiling in the past of how many tons uh, if you guys are comfortable with budgeting for removal. That they didn't get to the bottom of the lagoon that they would stop at that number so. we haven't got anywhere close to that in the east lagoon and with spring rains coming i want i want capacity if i need it and i don't have it yet because you all know we had to get pumps and pump lagoons 
bypass when the DNR don't want us bypassing. We removed a bypass line to be in compliance with the DNR with our new plant, and um, I don't have any room to store water now. So what can you do on your end? We can uh, do some I and I projects if you guys are into that. Infiltration and inflow is uh, the biggest issue here. Um, on average, your town uses about 383,000 gallons of drinking water a day. Um, by the time it comes to the wastewater plan, it's normally 400 to 600,000 gallons. But when you get a heavy rain, um, the storm water ends up in the wastewater system and sump pits that are illegally connected to the, the sanitary system that also adds water. And it's not uncommon anymore to get over 6 million gallons in a day. Um, and so right now the, the wastewater treatment plan is designed to treat 1.85 million gallons in a day. Anything more than that, the east lagoon cell we've repurposed into a flow equalization lagoon. So <coughs> it can temporarily hold some water um, until it can be brought back into the treatment process. Um, the East Lagoon, once it's empty of sludge, you'll have about 17 million gallons of storage. Um, but when you have the really rainy season, um, when the sludge isn't all out yet, like we had last year, just ran out of room to go with the water. Um, I mean, when it's, when it's raining really hard, over 90%, maybe over 95% of the water that's going to the wastewater treatment plant isn't wastewater, it's storm water. So runoff and we have found several major ones out in the fields uh late last fall um farmers had hit them knocked manholes off in waterways so when we would get a torrential downpour that water's coming down the waterway and was going right straight into our sanitary sewer we have sealed them and put on some risers and fixed several spots that we've found recently since last year's spring rain so i think we're, we've we've put a good dent into it but it's, it definitely hasn't fixed the whole problem. Have you had a chance to look at that smoke testing we did a few years ago? Yeah, it seemed like they found um, a few small things. Um, I don't know how many of those were addressed. Yeah, there isn't a lot. I... At the end of the day, pipes, just like anything else, have a, a, a lifespan. Um, funding agencies usually say 50 years for a sewer pipe or a water main, something like that. As they get older, they get more cracks, they get more leaks, and uh, like service lines too to every house. The private like lines. the issues we had last year when those emergencies that broke over there between Swan and Broadway, and we repaired what we could. And you can run cameras down any of them; they all have cracks and seams. And, and once the ground saturated, then it's leaching in between all the old clay tile and stuff throughout the whole town. I know there was a, a spot on Houston Street that they recommended we line about a block if you can dig that up and maybe that was about the only one that we didn't get done that was our that was on our system because they didn't really find a lot of houses I don't think if I, there was a few but not a lot Sean how often when you're in doing rental permits do you see sump pumps going into I don't see a lot of sump pumps, and I look to see if they're going into the the actual sewer stack. Yeah. If they are, that's one that they have to correct. Um, one thing I'm starting to see more of, and I like seeing it, is the, the radon mitigation on them. But uh, that actually exits out. That has nothing to do with the sewer. I do not come across a lot of them that are connected in. I know when they did the smoke test throughout town, we got a lot of calls for the fire department. Um, and we would explain to them what the problem was, why they were getting smoke in their house, whether they remedied it or not, I, that I don't know. I think we just did some isolated areas that smoked the smoke test. I think, I think they smoked the, pretty much the whole town, didn't they? They did. That one that you have, area. yeah. I, <coughs> they just didn't find a lot. Yeah. So. I guess to go to go back to the original problem, we've paid someone to do this already to get that sludge out of there, and they're just not coming. We have not paid them. <laughs> they are they're getting paid by the ton right now, but they are under contract to remove a certain number of tons, and they're not and and they're not doing it. 
but we have not paid them. But the problem is, is there's not, you can't just go get on, get in the yellow pages and find, they're like the only one that does it. it that's part of the problem. It, there's no competition, so they have no incentive to. Plus they had, originally they had a hard time lining up fields that would exist. Right, they got to have a place to go with it. And then when your ground freezes, they can't incorporate it in. And then they got a short window in the spring with spring rains where they get stuck. And then when farmers start planting, then once again, you can't dispose of it once they suck it out. It's a lot of timeline stuff, but. I don't know, you, maybe Let's you get a hold of Bobby and say a council's losing <laughs> losing patience with him, and maybe he, I mean, I don't think there's a lot he can do either. I, well, there are other companies in eastern Iowa that will do it. There aren't many. There's at least one or two. But um, the company that got the job put in a pretty low number, so they're gonna, they would have to figure out what to do about that. If they're well, I mean, us. that's that's their problem. That's Leander's but, problem. I'm, you know. That's, I think that's why they're, partially why they're hesitant to yeah. move on to someone else. But, uh, there you go. Tell them you don't know how long we can hold off on charging them, even though we probably won't get it. Liquidated charging damage. liquidated damages. And we can start trying to do that. That might get his attention. I mean, if we have extra expenses from pumping out the lagoons this spring. I mean, it's, they had to help pay for that last year. Yeah. Right? Okay. Anybody have any old business? I guess we just talked about some old business. <laughs> any uh, one wishing to address the council on matters that we did discuss or didn't discuss tonight? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Thank you.